Hi everyone, it's Mickey again, and in this video we're going to be creating a simplistic dialogue system using GameMaker. We're going to keep everything self-contained and encapsulate it. If you're looking for something more advanced by using external tools, check out the description below for a link to that. Now I have my sample project in front of me. You can see there's no objects. I only have one room and the sprites that are required for this particular demo. What we're going to be doing is creating everything from scratch. So the first thing we want to do is create a script itself. We're going to be naming this function dialog, which it will contain the rest of the functions we need for everything to work. Now, because I want everything encapsulated, I want to new up a new struct each time. So I'm going to add the keyword constructor onto the end. This will allow me to add the variables and functions needed within this structure to keep everything encapsulated. Before we add any of the functions, we need an array to hold our current dialogues. We are going to fill this array with structs, and then we're going to read the array one by one to have the dialog appear. The very first method that we're going to be creating is going to be an add function. We will be using two parameters. The first parameter is going to be the sprite, and the second parameter will be the message that we pass through. Now we can simply just use the built-in function called array push to add onto our dialogues. Like I said, we are going to be adding a structure, so that means that we need an open and close curly brace. Now we just need to provide the structure with the variables that we are going to be using. We will be using the sprite and we'll pass in the parameter that we have above. And finally, we will also be using the message that we pass in. Now our add function is complete and we're able to push dialogues into the system. Let's create the other function. This function is going to be responsible for popping an item off the dialog and returning it into our code. This means that we need to grab the first element within our array. Then once we have the element, we can go ahead and delete it. Finally, returning the temporary value back to our dialog system. This means that anytime we pop an item off of our dialog, it's going to take that first element, return it, and then remove it from the array. The final function that I'm going to be coding is a simple count function. This is just a wrapper on the array length, and we're gonna be using this to determine whether or not there's any dialogues left in our system to display. Now that our script is done, I'm gonna make sure the file name matches the function that I put inside. Now I'll create our first object. Now the way the dialog system is going to be working is we are going to have a single parent object and then multiple child objects. They are going to inherit each other, meaning that the parent object is going to be in control of the dialog and drawing, and the child object will just be the messages. So for the parent object, we are going to use a create event. We also need a draw GUI event, and then finally a step event. Let me maximize this because we'll get the parent working before we start on the child. The first thing I want to do is new up the struct of our dialog. We also need to determine which key we're able to press to move on to the next dialog. And in my case, I'm going to be using any key on the keyboard. I also need a variable to tell myself if I'm able to show the dialog or not. This is going to be used in the draw event to actually draw the dialog to the scene. In addition, I need a variable to hold on to that current dialog that we should be drawing. And finally, for some effects, I'll have an alpha variable set to zero, and this will fade the dialog in. Now, I want to switch to the step event before we go to the draw. The first thing I need to do is check to see whether I'm showing the dialog or not. We'll be using this as a switch in order to go get a new dialog from our system. But the first thing we're going to have to do is check to see if the dialog count is less or equal to zero. And this means that there's no more dialogues left in our system. And if that is the case, we'll just destroy the instance and do an early return. If that isn't the case, we'll come down underneath our if statement and we can pop that first dialog and store it in our current dialog variable and then switch our Boolean to true, which in the next step would come into the else statement. In this else statement, we're not going to be doing much in the step event, but we will make sure that we listen to the release key of the keyboard. And if we've pressed any key, what we'll do is we'll set our Boolean showing dialog default, which then will trigger the above code once again, and we'll set our alpha to zero so that it can fade in. Now for the draw event, we're going to have to do a bunch of coding. We want to make sure that we only draw the dialog if showing dialog is true. If that is true, I'm going to set some default variables here to make the coding shorter. You can see I have the start and stop position for X and Y. I also have the height, the border, and padding. And this will all become apparent in a second. The first thing we're going to need to do is figure out the height of our message. 
Now, by default, we're using the draw text, so the height is normally going to be the same. But in the rare case that it's not, we'll check to see if the current dialog sprite is bigger than the height, and if it is, we'll set the height to be the height of our sprite. One thing to mention, in each individual sprite, we will need to make sure that the origin is in the top left, or else our math will be wrong. Now that we've figured out the height, let's add a bit of padding to the top and the bottom. We'll multiply our padding by two, which means we'll have 32 pixels at the top and bottom of our sprites. Next, we need to figure out the starting position for the text. We'll get the sprite width and then add the padding. Now, for a little bit of an effect, I'm going to make sure I set the alpha to our current alpha version. This means that at the end of my drawing, I should also reset the alpha to one. And now comes the fun part, which we're going to draw all of our graphics. We need to make sure that we set our color to black and we're going to be drawing a black rectangle the size of our screen using the display get GUI width and then passing in the height variable as above. Next, I wanna draw a white border. I'll make sure I use the border command, which is five pixels by five pixels, going all the way across the screen, minus five pixels, and then using the height again, minus five pixels. This will create a nice white border around our dialogue. Now, I don't want the inside of my dialogue to be white, so once again, I need to draw a black border, and I'm just going to shrink the border size so that we have the inside of our dialogue black. Now we can get to drawing our sprite. First, we should check if the current dialogue sprite does not equal negative one. If by chance it does, we don't want the system to fail. If it doesn't equal no one, we'll make sure that we draw the sprite on the screen, starting at the border, just adding a little bit of a padding. Remember, this is going to start in the top left. Next, let's draw our actual text. We'll set our default color to white, starting at text X and Y. We'll pass in the message, and then you can see that we are using the extended version of the text. So the 16 is going to be how much it can be between the top and bottom. And then the display width is going to be the left and right. So we are basically saying this can go almost all the way across the screen before it wraps. The final thing that I wanna do is make sure that I change the alpha from zero to one over time. Now we're done with our dialogue parent, let's create a new object and make sure that the parent for that object is going to be the one that we just created. You will know if you did everything right because the events will be automatically filled in. I'm going to name this particular object dialogue sample A. Now I do wanna add some dialogue into my system, so I'll right click and I will say inherit the create event. Invent inherit it will run everything in the parent first, and then it will run everything below. This means that I can come in here and I can set up my characters. I could set the dialogue character to be green to say hello, the dialogue character red to say my name is Mr. Green, and I could finally set the character blue to say today it's been snowing. And if I go to my room, and I add this sample dialogue in here, and I run my game, we'll see the dialogue system in action. You can see we have our black box, followed by a white padding box, and then black inside with the sprite and the words. I can hit any key on my keyboard to go to the next dialogue, and once the dialogue has finished, after this, it will automatically be deleted and cleaned up. This means that anytime we want the dialogue to happen, all we have to do is instantiate our dialogue sample A, or create a new one and just add the different dialogues into it. I hope you found the video enjoyable and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.